All right guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be reviewing another Amazon uh, pressure washer. I call it an Amazon pressure washer because it's an independent brand that sells on Amazon. Um, I don't know if they sell it anywhere else. You're definitely not gonna find it in your big box stores. Um, so Amazon is the main place to get these things. Now this one is from Tiende, they actually, or however you pronounce that, I'm not sure. Um, I wanted to do a review on this one. They actually sent me the pressure washer to do a review on it. And I let them know right away, like, yes, send it out. Um, I'd be happy to do a review, but my review is gonna be honest. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, they rate this thing at 3,800 PSI, 2.8 GPM. And right now I will tell you, there's no chance of it getting that. Um, I've, I've never cr come across any electric pressure washer that gets anywhere close to those numbers. So there's, there's no way this is gonna get that. But I wanted to actually get the actual usable PSI and GPM ratings for you guys so you can see. Let's get this thing opened up and check it out. Alrighty guys, so first things first, we do have a little, uh, looks like a little instruction card, a little wrench that they give you, and some quite a few screws actually, as you can see there. So interesting, interesting to see, it's probably just to assemble the thing, but um, that's more screws than any other pressure washer that I've reviewed comes with. And interesting that it comes with a wrench too. So, but we'll check that out. So number one is the pressure washer wand. This one is similar to some of the other ones that I've reviewed in the past. Ouch. Um, and I don't like this. So it's a pretty, pretty cheap feeling. Oh, interesting. Pretty cheap feeling um, in order to lock it into place. Actually, does it have a lock? Hmm. There you go. So it just has this little red button here so you can, that locks it so you can't compress the trigger. Push it back in and you can. Um, it is a push on and twist type of a connector. It's not a nor normal quick connect, which uh, I'm not a fan of. I'd, I'd much rather this thing be an actual quick connect. Um, however, at the end, it does have your standard quick connect for your tips, so that's nice. One thing to note is the connection for the hose is way smaller than any of the other pressure washers that I've seen. So um, I'm assuming this hose is just gonna be a um, much smaller connection point. Uh, one thing to note guys is I do always recommend, pretty much with every single pressure washer, except for the atoms that I just reviewed, um, I recommend that you replace the factory hose and the factory pressure washer wand. Um, I always suggest the Uberflex hose. Uh, it's super pliable, doesn't kink, as you can see, you can kind of tie it in a knot. Doesn't kink up. Uh, just works amazingly, amazingly well. Has a standard M22 by 14 millimeter fitting that will fit all your Craftsman's, uh, Ryobi's, I believe Karcher. Um, most of the big box brands are gonna be an M22 by 14 connection point, so this will be a direct fit. Um, if you have like an active pressure washer or uh, I apologize, I can't remember if the Sun Joes are a 15 or a 14, but um, regardless if it's a 15, you just have to get an adapter. I'll link that down in, uh, in the description below as well for you guys. Um, and you just, one side's an M15, uh, M22 15, and then it reduces down to an M22 14, and you can just plug this in, it works perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and go through. So, hmm, more tools. So as you can see here, We've got a little screwdriver and then some attachments and a little brass coupler here. More attachments it looks like. Here's the backing piece and more attachments. Another attachment, this is a, looks like it's probably a little soap dispenser slash foam cannon type of a thing that they, they give you hose that it comes with. Now I'm not sure of the size of this hose. Let's see if I can find that out for you guys. Doesn't say, uh, but I'm assuming it's gonna be a 20 footer. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know for sure. I'll check the, uh, the listing and I'll put the size of the hose up here for you guys. But, but here's the hose and as you can see, one side is an M22 fitting. Um, I don't know if this is a 15 or a 14. Let's compare it to the Uberflex. And this unit is going to be using an M22 
by 15 millimeter connection point. So if you do want to get this, this unit and you do want to swap it out to this pressure washer hose, which I highly recommend, um, you do need the adapter. Again, that's linked down below. But here is the portion that goes onto the pressure washer wand. And for some reason, they didn't do an M22 on that. They did this little guy. That's exactly why they gave you the wrench so you can tighten that on. Um, definitely not a huge fan of that. So we'll see. Um, anyways, I'm not gonna be testing this pressure washer with this hose because I don't recommend it. Um, I'm gonna be using my Uberflex hose and my pressure washer wand that I, that I like to use. Um, we're, Cause we're basically the, the whole reason for these reviews is I'm testing the actual pump and motor of the, of the unit, not the accessories because a lot of times the accessories aren't good across the board. So, uh, but as you can see, this hose stays all tangled up, very annoying. Let me get you unwind it enough so you guys can see how it kinks. Super, super bad there. And then if you try and tie it into a knot, it grips, it grips. It doesn't slide nicely. So another issue, like if you're working around uh, your car and it hits tires, it's gonna grab, it's really annoying. So. Uber, Uber flex for the win and I, like I said, I definitely recommend you guys upgrade to that Uber flex hose. All right, so next we have, it looks like power cord and all that. It's the unit. So let's pull this guy out. Here it is. There you go. So really quickly, we're just gonna run over the features of this unit real quick. Uh, so you do have right on the back here, you have a little hose that will, so, the little self dispenser actually will be able to screw into the back here. It's that sits there nicely. Put the hose in, put the cap on, and that is your soap dispensing uh, container. So with that, it will run its the soap all the way through the hose, which I don't recommend. Um, I don't like that because even once you switch back to water, it still runs. You, you have to give it time for the soap to clear out. So I don't like that. Highly recommend getting a aftermarket foam cannon that you guys can attach to the end of the pressure washer wand. It's the best way. It creates an amazing amount of foam um, and you're not contaminating your hose. Also, the water inlet. Wow. Let's see here. Yeah, water inlet is plastic. Although they do give you this little, I don't know if it's actually brass or not. So they give you this little piece here to screw onto that plastic unit. So you screw one side on and the other side you can screw a hose into and it's good to go. So not the best, the fact that that's plastic is a little bit of a disappointment, but once you get this set on there, then it's not so much of a big deal really because uh, you're not gonna be constantly screwing this part on and off of the plastic. You're gonna be using this, the hose into this piece which is all metal and fine. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Just put this guy on. And we'll see if that leaks. Probably don't wanna over tighten that and strip out the plastic thread. So um, now guys, I'm not gonna go ahead and put all these accessories on. Like I said, I don't recommend any of the accessories that come with these electric pressure washers. I always recommend upgrading to the better stuff. I'll link down below. So. Um, I'm not gonna deal with putting all that together. I'm just gonna use the unit as is to test out the, uh, the performance of the unit itself. Now they do give you a nice little holder for your nozzles and it's nice, they give you a good range. So they give you uh, a, so they give you a soap dispensing nozzle, a 40 degree, 25 degree, 15 degree, and a zero degree nozzle. So you're covered, you, you get everything you need. I don't know what size orifice these are. Yeah, it doesn't say on here. So we'll just have to test it out and see because yeah, this, this, these are not labeled. So we'll just hook them up. I'm sure they're probably all gonna be the exact same orifice size. Actually, that one looks pretty big. So we'll, I'm, like I said, I'll, I'll check a couple of them to make sure we're getting the same PSI. As long as we're getting the same PSI, it means they're the same size orifice and we're gonna get the same PSI and GPM for all of them, so. Uh, all 
All right, so one thing to note, you do have, there's quite a few pieces to put together on this unit, but it's nice that they give you all the tools needed, so that, that's a plus. Um, again, the hose, I do not like that this connection point is so small. Don't like that it's a twist on type and not a quick connect. Um, so, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, now, the backing piece seems sturdy. Uh, actually, doesn't really feel sturdy. Let's do, just so you guys can see this thing. Um, it's got a nice metal side here, but the top is just plastic. So it just, I mean, it, I don't know if you guys, it is pretty wonky actually. Once it's mounted, I'm sure it's fine because you're not twisting it, but uh, I would have preferred that they would have continued with the metal all the way through. Actually, I don't even know if this is metal. You know what? Yeah, but at least it's more sturdy. I would have preferred that they did that all the way through and then left a little foam padding on there because I'm sure that they did this plastic up here. It gets a little bit softer and tackier to grip onto, um, but it's actually not comfortable anyway. It almost feels like it's gonna give you a blister, so. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna, instead of assembling the whole thing, I will uh, put a picture up somewhere around here for you guys so you can see what it looks like assembled. All right, so now that we have the thing unboxed, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the M22 by 15 to M22 by 14 adapter. Hook up my pressure washer hose and pressure washer gauge. Let's go test the numbers on this thing and see what the PSI and GPM ratings are. All right, guys, so just real quickly, I'm about to plug this thing in. I just wanted to show this to you. Just bring it up here. Here is the ground fault interrupt outlet um, plug. Now, this thing feels pretty chintzy, um, so I, I don't know how much trust I would put in that, um, but it is there. It's in line, which I do prefer as opposed to the big plugs. This you can just plug into the wall like normal. It is a two pronger, not a three prong. So that's it. We're gonna go and plug it in now. All right, guys, so I've got the water hooked up. I'm about to hook up my pressure washer hose. Again, Uberflex 50 footer. And then I am using my aftermarket pressure washer wand. This one's great. It's from, um, it, it, I, I like this one a lot because it has a swivel built into it to a, to a I believe it's a 3 8 uh, inch quick connect, which is the standard quick connects that are linked down below as well. And um, I like it because that way your, your hose doesn't bunch up behind you. It continually just kind of works around, twists as needed, and it works really great. So um, this is linked down below. Make sure you guys look at the listing. Usually there's two different uh, pressure washer wands on that listing. One of them is this one with the swivel. The other one does not have a swivel. And a lot of times the one with the swivel sells out, meaning the only one that will show is the one without the swivel. So if you're wanting the one with the swivel, just pay attention, make sure you're getting the one that's there. It's like 42 bucks or 46 bucks or something like that for the one with the swivel. All right, and here is the pressure washer gauge. Uh, this is gonna test our PSI. So I'm just gonna hook it in line to the hose and from that to the pressure washer wand and we'll be able to check out the PSI. Now I am going to be checking it using the tips that the, actually, that, that the unit came with because uh, that's what they're rating it at, I'm assuming with those tips. So. We'll get an accurate reading with what it comes with. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna start off with the 40 degree nozzle. This is what I always use for car detailing. So we're gonna test it with that and then I'll throw on the 15 to make sure we're getting the same PSI that it has the same orifice size. All right, we're set there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the water on, and turn the machine on. So far, so good, no leaks. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the trigger, let the air get out of the, out of the line. There we go, it sounds like it's getting out now. All right, should be good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and type a turn on the machine. All right, so builds good pressure. Uh, no squeak at the end, which is pretty common with these electric pressure washers. So no squeak at the end is a good thing. I like that. Nice and quiet, and it does have the total stop system. So very good. Now, real quickly. So now pressure has built up in the hose, and we are currently sitting at uh, 10, 1400 PSI before even pulling the trigger. Um, we'll see what, what it does. All 
All right, guys, so checking the pressure. Um, like I said, it started off just pressurized, went up to 1400 PSI. Uh, I pulled the trigger for a while. I'll show you guys the results of the actual usable PSI in a second. Um, but after I let go, it bounces up to about 2000 and settles back down to 1750. But that is not what the usable pressure is with this 40 degree nozzle, as you can see. Big departure from the 3800 PSI that they're rating this thing at. Sitting about between 13 and 1400 PSI. So, uh, yeah, we'll check the GPM. If that has a high GPM, then I'm happy with this machine. And, and uh, for car detailing, then that's great. Um, we're going to go ahead and test that in a minute, but we're going to throw on a 15 degree nozzle real quick and see what the PSI is on that. There's the 15. Yeah, same thing. So um, they're all the same orifice size, so I don't need to test all the, all the other ones. Um, so yeah, you're sitting at a, on a good day, 1400 PSI, pretty much 1300 PSI. Uh, we will test the GPM on that in a minute. Really quickly, I do wanna plug in a Ryobi nozzle, uh, one of the, the 15 degree nozzle that comes with a Ryobi unit, because those typically have the smallest orifice size and the, are, are the PSI, is higher with the smaller orifice. So just to see, just to see what, what that gets. So here is the Ryobi nozzle. Plug that in and here we go. All right, so that's only getting us to 1650. Also, one thing to note, guys, is the um, the delay between pulling the trigger before this thing turns on. You can see, just like it's it's longer than any of the other ones. Um, let me, I'll do it here for you guys so you see. That's a long time to. I don't like that. Um, uh, there's usually a little bit of a delay with these large pressure washers, but not that long. So uh, just. For your, for your knowledge. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back over to the 15, sorry, the 40 degree nozzle that it came with, and we'll test the GPM. Alrighty, so same as always, same process as always to, to figure out our GPM. We're just gonna put the uh, wand into the bucket, pull the trigger for one minute exactly, and we'll get the measurement on the bucket and see how many gallons per minute we get. So um, thanks to one of the viewers, uh, I always do a stopwatch that counts up and I have to constantly watch it. And um, they made another say, hey, why don't you just use a countdown timer from one minute so I don't have to watch it the whole time. And uh, you're a genius. <laughs> I never thought about that. So I'm gonna try that right now. Let me just go to the thing here, stopwatch. Nope, timer. Timer for one minute. Okay. So it's set for one minute. Go ahead and plug this guy in. Alrighty, and here we Well, I don't think I'm gonna be doing it that way anymore because that noise just reminds me of my alarm to wake up and I don't like that noise. So <laughs> I'm gonna stick to my normal stop, uh, my normal timer. So pretty unimpressive here guys on the um, gallons per minute rating. We're sitting at five quarts. So with that, let me just do the calculation really quickly on here, five quarts to gallons. What? Five quarts to gallons. So we're getting 1.25 GPM. All right guys, so this machine that is rated on Amazon at 3,800 PSI at 2.8 GPM, real world numbers, what you actually get while you're using it with the, with the nozzles they give you, 1,300 PSI, 1.25 GPM. 
So uh, this is a no-go for me. Um, the accessories that it came with are, are not the best, actually pretty low on the, on the totem pole of what I've seen in the past. So uh, there are other pressure washers on Amazon that are, that are, that are great units. They, they are listed at like 3000 PSI and they don't get anywhere near that, but they, their numbers are pretty good. So this one being 1300 PSI at 1.25 GPM and for the, just for the fact of them listing it at 3800 at one, uh, sorry, at 2.8 GPM is ridiculous. Um, now this brand does have a few different models. They have one with a digital screen and, and, and uh, then they have this one and they have this one with a hose reel on it. Um, different prices for all of those. They are all, they all state the same thing of 3800 PSI, 2.8 GPM. So, you know, I, I, I doubt that any of them get anywhere close to that. Are they any better than this one? Maybe, I'm not sure. But uh, for me guys on this one, I think this is the first one I would actually say no to. Um, again, just because like, if, if, yeah, just, those numbers are so, so like, you know, not great, and the fact that they're listing it at 3,800 PSI is ridiculous. Um, I actually looked at some of the reviews on Amazon, and the top review states, so I wouldn't buy anything, I wouldn't buy a pressure washer with anything less than 1.5 GPM and 2,000 PSI or something like that, otherwise you're wasting your money. Unfortunately for that person, um, if you actually take the actual PSI, actual usable numbers, it's way below, uh, the numbers that you would suggest so uh, anyways I hope that helps you guys if you have the unit it's not terrible um, you know it's it's gonna get the job done if you're looking at buying one um, I would steer clear I would just get I would get something else for the price I think this is 175 bucks or something like that I would absolutely just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and either buy the Ryobi 1600 or the Craftsman 1700 they're very similar machines and they're both a hundred bucks so um, still upgrade your hoses and stuff because the hoses those come with aren't great either. They're better than what comes with this machine, but they're still not great. So make sure you upgrade those. And that is it, guys. So please make sure you give me a thumbs up for the video. Like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.